So it started uh, during my uni years. So during my bachelor's, I was actually studying electrical engineering, which was very hardware focused. Uh, but I found that the best way to create anything, even within that area, was to write some of a form of a computer program. When you're a hardware engineer, the programming language that you're normally dealing with is assembly. There isn't that much innovation in terms of programming language. The concepts that you use are fairly old, like 20, 30 years old, um, modern object-oriented concepts and stuff like that. Like object-oriented is not modern anyways, but even those levels of higher level programming constructs would be absent when you're dealing with assembly, um, the, the assembly programming language. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I was going to switch from a hardware focus into a software focus. Um, and And the reason why I did that is I wanted to create stuff mm -hmm. and you have to write code to create stuff mm -hmm. and mistakes mm -hmm. in hardware are expensive as well. I see. Software is really cheap. So you can try and if it doesn't work, you can throw it away, start again, build something yeah. better and continuous improvement is much easier to do as an individual on his own instead of uh, in the hardware space where you need a team and a lot of resources to actually innovate. Okay, what scientific, um, what specifically you're using in JS and why? For front end, I'm, I'm a big fan of TypeScript. All my JavaScript code has been in TypeScript. I didn't want to do massive JavaScript projects unless I had type safety and TypeScript gave that to me. And that's sort of the reason for my popularity as well, because I jumped into TypeScript as soon as it got released in October 2012. So I've been a part of the community since the beginning. Mm. So that's one of the tech choices within JavaScript that I use. Mm -hmm. The other one is React. The reason why I use React is primarily because of JSX, which means that you can analyze and statically understand your HTML and embed it within your JavaScript code, mm -hmm. uh, which makes the maintainability and refactoring and understanding of existing code just so much easier. Uh, so that's why React. And then for state management, I use MobX. I'm a bit biased there. Uh, one of the reasons is that, that MobX is written in TypeScript and anything that is written in TypeScript sort of gets my uh, mm. uh, seal of approval a yeah. bit better than something that doesn't support TypeScript natively. Um, so, and, and another reason why I use MobX is that I tried the other options and I found myself essentially recreating the convenience of MobX within those other frameworks as well. So I decided that it's better that if I just use an existing framework that does the job that I needed to do. So it's TypeScript, React, MobX. And in the back end, I'm not particularly biased towards anything, uh, but we're using a lot of AWS Lambdas. So uh, Claudia.js is what I use there. Great. And I see behind your back, there are some kind of certificates. Can you tell me more about it? So, so the biggest one there is uh, the Microsoft MVP one. Yeah. So be becoming a Microsoft MVP is actually quite an achievement. Uh, I'm fortunate because no matter how hard you com contribute to the community, you still need someone to refer you. And I'm fortunate that I got into contact with someone who ref referred me to the program. And one, once I was referred, my uh, contributions were already sufficient that it wasn't hard to get it. A few others are from the conferences. This is from a conference that I went to in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, this is from a Google event that happened. This is from a security training. Uh, next question, Basarat, is uh, what, in your opinion, separates a novice from an expert in JavaScript, from a real expert? Yeah, I, I think there's three stages. There's the novice, and then there's the person who thinks that they're not a novice, and then there's the expert who knows that they're a novice. Ah. Um, I think the real expert is the expert who knows that they're a novice. Um, mm -hmm. you, you realize that learning is a continuous process. So the, I believe there are three categories of developers. There's a novice, and then there's the developer who believes that they are no longer a novice and they've learned everything that they've learned. And then there's the third category, which is a developer who knows the things that, um, who, who know the things that they need to practice on and learn or add to their stack. And I think that those are the real experts.
Yes. So, so, so uh, a junior developer for life is sort of the hashtag that is going around in uh, the JavaScript frameworks for the people that understand that there will always be new technology that you will have to learn and keep up with in order to be a real expert. What direction do you see this field, JavaScript or software development, is heading, Basra, in your opinion? Where is it going, in your opinion? Simplicity. Uh, we want to write less and less code to achieve the same goals. And the reason is the expectations of users and humanity in general are so high that you have to be able to express the existing concepts as conveniently as possible in order to build more higher level concepts. And like the, the level of latency that would be acceptable earlier is no longer acceptable to a user today. Like a user in 2007 would be fine clicking and waiting a few seconds. But if you have a second now in your second delay now in your application, that is considered much worse and a lot less tolerable. So this is why we're seeing more, more and more frameworks as well, because the frameworks essentially encapsulate the existing concepts into something that is repeatable. Uh, like we all need to create components to show reusable functionality. Mm -hmm. Now, creating components need to be as easy as possible. And all the frameworks are really trying to make that part as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. And also, so because, we, also because people have this all the time uh, with yes. them, they, are, yes. they get yes. used to that everything is very fast. Yes. yes. So, so that, that was my reference, 2007 iPhone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're saying basically a user from 2007 would accept one, uh, one second upload time of, yep. and now what's the minimum that he would accept uh, it has to be 60 frames per second um but but we were seeing real world uh, latency of like high load network costs to be um and and given i'm in australia so <laughs> i am pretty far removed from the rest of the world but but three fifty milliseconds is pretty much the limit for a network call nowadays wow that's amazing Okay, so you said simplicity. This is the direction where the whole uh, software development is going. Do you think? Do you see any other direction? And, and unification. We people are slightly tired of reinventing the wheel as well. And another trend that I'm noticing is um, organization-backed open source. So previously, if you could enter the open source market and be quite successful on your own. But more and more, if you have to, the market that you're competing in is pre, pre already full of uh, projects from big organizations like Microsoft, Google, Facebook. Mm -hmm. So as an example, if you want to create a React competitor, unless you're Google or Microsoft, you're sort of going to struggle to get significant traction. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, uh, next question is, uh, Basrat, what uh, are some tips you would give someone who's just starting out as a developer? Al always try to work with people that are smarter than you. Than you. It is a bit hard to get into places like that. Uh, but what I find is, if you're willing to sacrifice on m most likely just the role, like, like even the salary is not something that is a sacrifice in places where smart people work, because normally smart people get paid well reasonable uh, a reasonable salary so but what you do have to sacrifice is okay i'm going to work here as an intern just just get me into your team i've seen you at meetups or uh, conferences and i know i'll work hard um, and i can prove that i've worked hard i've done open source stuff on or help people on stack overflow i need a chance to work with more smart people and improve my career from there so, so before that, some groundwork that you have to do, sadly, is a bit of open source and a bit of Stack Overflow or some other means of in interacting with the... Like, if you want to identify the smart people in the city that you live in, you have to go to a meetup to mm -hmm. see the speakers and see the meet the people around the speakers to... Inter and you have to interact with them. Um, and you need to have some topic of conversation and normally GitHub and Stack Overflow helps there. Mm -hmm. 
fantastic. And how, it's a maybe strange question, but how do you, if you have five minutes with somebody, what kind of knowledge you would like to get to, to decide this guy is a, an expert? Because you know, many, find... people, many, many people are theoretical, not practical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so that, that is perfectly fine. I actually prefer switched on people. I don't have a given formula for that. It's just when you're conversing with someone, if they're clear in their sentences and they're clear about what they're trying to convey, that, that, that's sufficient for me. I find that to be actually quite rare in the, like, given a people room of 100 people, there might not be as many of those people as you'd hope humanity to have. Mm. Um, so just switched on conversations and uh, mm. clear intent. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. It's a, it's the first time I actually meet a high profile uh, developer like you, but the one thing is, uh, and here in expert, we have quite a lot of them also, but humble. That's what, that's what, what comes to my mind. Always oh, program so much. developers must be humble because they always yes. learn, 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 learn. So must have this, psychology like i need to stay humble and I, i cannot say i'm the greatest i'm the best because yeah one hour yeah, after i definitely. said that a new update will come <laughs> yeah it, it's like everything else you have to keep practicing as well um if i stop writing code i find that um I, even i forget things so uh, w reason why i'm not um uh, but multilingual I, i only program in typescript is if I swap to another language and I, I love le reading those languages, but if I spend a month in those other languages, I sort of, I, it hasn't happened to me, but for a while, but it, I remember in the past when I was using C sharp as well as JavaScript, as well as Java, as well as Python, like in mm -hmm. the same organization, mm -hmm. I, I would need time to swap between languages. Oh, okay. This is not the right syntax for this. This is not the, write library for this. This is not the environment that my brain is trying to write to code. Mm. But now that I'm fully focused on TypeScript, it's, it's easy. So you wrote a couple of books. Can you uh, tell me uh, more of them? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so I've written beginning Node.js. That was five years, six years ago. Um, and since then I've written TypeScript Deep Dive. But when TypeScript was released, they, they want great talks. The only uh, documentation for TypeScript was the language specification, which was a heavily focused on syntax because of course they were introducing any syntax so they had to explain it and be very formal about it. So like there was BNF annotations in there. Um, and B it also assumed that you were already familiar with JavaScript. So it was quite a high um, barrier to entry. So I, I, write it, I started to write TypeScript deep, deep Dive simply as my understanding of TypeScript for the developers that I was working with. And that really took off and it really became a book on its own right. And th those are the two big ones. I, I've written, I've done a lot of um, egghead courses as well. So there's a TypeScript and React course. Uh, there's an algorithms course. There are a few others, I'm sure, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. Okay, the, great. The, the best source to find out the things that I'm working on is my website, basarad.com. That's great that you have it. Uh, so basarad.com, this is where people can find you. Yes. And connect with and you. And the things that I'm proud of. <laughs> very good, very yeah. good. Thank you very much, Basarad, for your time. I see you have a guitarist there. You're a guitarist or is your passion, new passion? Yes. Yeah? Yes. yes. Um, it's, um, it's, it's my yoga, really. It's, it's something to force me to switch off my brain to let my subconscious process whatever it needs to process. Yes, it is so true. You need to break yeah, from, from the, from the yeah. thought process and this is the best part. Music. Maybe one more question. What do you think about the whole community of developers? Uh, is, it, is it growing? Is it, is it getting stronger? It is definitely growing. It is definitely getting stronger. I am very happy to be a part of this community. Um, take GitHub, like, I think GitHub really helped with that. Uh, in mm -hmm. the, the number of developers on GitHub, I think it's, uh, it's more than 10 million by now, <laughs> um, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, there are four, four million C-sharp developers out there, so combined, 
wow. all the programming languages, it's, it's massive. And um, the, their desire to share openly and um, learn together. And like, they're just, they're just great people. I, I wouldn't want to be a part of any other community, even if I had a choice. That's very, very interesting what you just said, because it reminded me uh, a couple of years ago, I listened to an interview with Steve Jobs and somebody asked him, what do you think, um, what drives uh, your employees, right? And he said, yeah. impact, impact, yeah. not, not money, impact. People even, you know, got, uh, were offered jobs two, three times more, uh, you know, um, profitable for them, but they stayed with him because of the vision he created. Uh, so you, in the beginning, you just said you have also the same vision that developers and uh, it can really help the world. Yes. In what areas do you think? See, so uh, the, the bigger category is engineers. Engineers are literally what form the world that we live in. Um, and the engineers includes people in hardware as well as people in software as well as mm -hmm. chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, um, and and all of us together uh, build the things that we see and the things that make humans great. That's awesome. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you for your time. No worries. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.